name is Matt Bradley, founder and director of the Retail Technology Show, and this is Five Minutes With, the bite-sized chat show where we talk to some of retail's most influential people. And today is no different as I'm joined by Matt Cater, co-founder of Quix Technologies. Matt, welcome. Morning. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, I was one of the lucky ones. I was at the Retail Technology Show last year. I was on your booth. You gave me a personal tour of the technologies. But um, for those who, who aren't aware of what Clix do, tell us a bit more about you. Okay, so Clix is a century technology business. Uh, we're three years old now, um, and we're specialising in the click and collect customer experience, basically. So we are helping retailers um, with uh, offers like smart lockers, um, and various things around a collection ecosystem to basically remove pain points around uh, customer collections uh, for click and collect. Yeah, good. I mean, one of the things I really enjoy about retail is the fast paced industry that it is. How have you seen some smart lockers evolve over the last year or so? And um, what sort of part do they now play in that customer journey? So click and collect continues to grow um, you know, rapidly in the, in the UK and, and across Europe. Um, smart lockers are now becoming um, a real key part of that customer experience. Um, as you know, the national living wage continues to go up, um, it's become more and more um, affordable to look at different options. Um, and where smart lockers really come into their own is that they can reduce, you know, staff deployment, or they can, you know, gives the retailers options to redeploy staff to other areas of a store uh, where they're needed. Um, and you know, and our lockers can go in as a completely autonomous solution really um will allow customers to to collect um their goods um if you know either from from lockers or from car park collections or even from you know larger goods that can be stored in um in warehouses and stock rooms well, i've used plenty myself and certainly convenience is definitely a keyword that always jumps out to me when it comes to smart lockers but you must have done quite a lot of research with the retailers that you're working with i suppose some of the retailers you want to work with as well is there sort of any interesting insights you've come out from that research? Yeah, so when we when we started this, there wasn't a lot available to be fair. This is a you know very much an emerging market. Um, you know, you're not seeing these as a as a mainstream offer just yet. I think 2020, late 2024, early 2025, you'll see a you know a lot more national rollouts planned of, of smart lockers, uh, both inside and outside of retailers' premises. Um, so the, the, the data wasn't available. So what we, we built, uh, knowing that we, we needed to collect this data to, you know, to validate what we were doing um, and to learn from it. The whole business um, has been built on customer feedback, essentially, both from the retailers we're dealing with and the consumers that, that they deal with. So at the end of our uh, collection system, so that the, the system works uh, with a mobile web app. So unlike traditional smart lockers you might have seen uh, outside petrol stations and on, you know, by train stations at four courts. Um, these, these lockers don't require a keypad or QR code. It's all done through a web link, which is text to the consumer when they've completed their click and collect order online. And then from that, they access their lockers and they can also access other features of the web app. Um, one of which is a, a feedback loop. After the transaction or after they've collected their goods, um, there's a feedback loop. Now that is really valuable data for both us and our customers. Um, key key takeaways from that, I would say, that's been the most surprising is that on average, we see about 75% of customers will collect on day zero. So the day they place their order, 75% um, will collect within that first store opening period. Um, that's, that's been higher than we expected. And that will vary retailer to retailer and product to product, but in general, that's what we see. Um, the other key piece of information we're taking away um, is that there is... A lot of customers will um, place an order online and then place an order within 15 minutes afterwards where they've forgotten something. So it, mm -hmm. it's, um, it is an issue. This this is a common problem. And so what our app has been able to do is to is to notice all these additional transactions that are happening within a few minutes. And what our lockers do is consolidate those orders. So as a, a retailer going to put goods back in a locker, um, they will see that there's just been an order placed and they'll be able to consolidate this together. So from the customer's point of view, both orders are in one locker. From the retailer's point of view, they're, you know, they're sweating the real estate of lockers even further. Um, and that feedback loop, you know, we're seeing at the start of trials, we've, we've seen the sample size of about 70%, which is far higher than any feedback that most of these retailers are getting at the moment. Um, we'll see that, that can actually fatigue over time, but you know, the trials that have been going now for up to two years, we're still getting 40% of customers leaving 
both quality and quantity feedback, you know, and we're continuing to build our product and our offer on the back of this, you know, fantastic uh, level of feedback that we're getting. Well, I was going to ask that actually, is, does that sort of feedback change your strategy in any way? I wouldn't say it changes it, but it, it continues to develop it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. you know, the strategy is the, the strategy, which we're, you know, we're pretty confident behind. But what it enables us to do is that we continue to change our technology roadmap into the features that we're developing. You know, we put together what we think we want, what we think we need, and just keep mining that that feedback and that data will help validate whether this is, you know, what priority place things. Uh, yeah. so the order consolidation function was something we brought in uh, just over a year and a half ago. Um, and we're now looking to bring in other things that will further increase that customer feedback. So like we're now linking up with NPS. NPS is a, a huge um, metric that a lot of retailers use. Yeah. Challenge with it is, generally speaking, they get a, quite a small sample size. You know, typically it's single digit percentage points of people complete it. We're now linking up with retailers own NPS surveys. So our results from our app, all that traffic is now being redirected to, uh, to, to, to their apps or their websites, um, which is gonna, you know, transform the level of feedback they're getting so um, much, much bigger contribution towards that mps score something that we look at as well as an event organizer yeah quick question now a bit of a random one for you what app do you use most on your phone oh i'm ashamed to say probably outlook <laughs> <laughs> rather it's not exciting but it will be outlook <laughs> no there you go and i'll tell you what another one for you what did you want to be when you were growing up okay it's not particularly ambitious I wanted to drive a cement mixer. <laughs> it's with my uncles worked for uh, Ready Creek and uh, yeah, and and I was fascinated by um, them driving around in lorries. So yeah, it wasn't particularly ambitious. As a, as a Have year. you ever got to do it? No, I haven't actually. See if we can make your dreams come true. I'm sure someone watching might be able to help facilitate that. We are now very, very close to the retail technology show. It is just around the corner. Matt, you and your team are going to be there. Click's got a great booth in the show. Uh, I'm sure you'll be doing live demos. What else are you looking forward to at the show? So just meeting with the retailers. You know, we, we met with loads the last couple of years um, and it's just connecting with those that we didn't haven't seen in, in previous years, really. You know, we've got the, the live demos. We're doing the spin to win again, which generated a load of hype last year um, where it's kind of like a, you know, uh, locker roulette, let's call it, where there's prices to be won um, and just a bit of fun. So um, really looking forward to it. And, we're, we're... and will you be sharing some of that customer insight that you've got? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, there'd be lots of information on the stand, um, lots more demos. Uh, we're launching a, a new beta version of our returns, customer returns through lock sh uh, lockers. So there's lots to share and get feedback on. Um, I'm very looking forward to being there. Good stuff. Something not to be missed. If you haven't already registered, I'm sure you already have. Let's be honest. Thousands of you already have. It's quicker to name the people that haven't registered. Retail Technology Show, registration open, live and completely free. Do it now when we'll see you on the 24th and 25th of April, London's Olympia. Matt, thanks very much, mate. Thank you. See you soon, Matt. <laughs>